back with more Ron Cook and Joe Starkey. The Cook and Joe Show on Sports Radio 93.7, The Fan. The Hokanator is in the house. Mr. Chris Hoke brought to you by Greater Pittsburgh Plumbing. Hokey, how are you? There we go. I got to push that button, don't I? Good to be here with you guys. Does horse usually push the button for no, you? That, no, that's on me. I don't want to blame horse. Even though, even though horse has some coaching problems there with his Pop Warner team. How about that horse? He he took a, he took one when's for the you pl- right when's off the top. When we head into the playoffs, horse. Yeah, they're that's not going to make good question this year. Uh, we're petitioning to get horse fired, is it actually. Coaching? Is it yeah. coaching? Ron and I were at the school board meeting <laughs> heckling horse. Be careful. The school board meetings. <laughs> I don't want to go near any one of those a lot anywhere of good coaches have in the had country. Problems at school board. There's no maybe. question. All right, Hokey. Let's get right down to business, my friend. You were asked the other day on the post game by Bob Pompiani if you thought that it was time to go to Mason Rudolph, and you basically said you have to consider it because Ben is a sitting duck. I mean, I'm I'm paraphrasing what you said, but that's basically what you said. So. We, we, we get no stretch. We need to get no warm-ups. No, no, we no, need to no. get no calisthenics. We're going <laughs> right the, to the game. This is the wild card. Game, yeah. Buddy. This isn't <laughs> this a series. Is, no. We're going right to it. And listen, I mean, go back and watch the film, you know, and you can watch as many times as you want. And, uh, you know, Ben, um, you know, it. in order for an offense to work, an offensive line and a quarterback and the receivers, they all have to work together. And there's a lot of talk right now about the offensive line and how they struggle. And they have their struggles, right? They've got to improve. And they've, imp- they've improved every single week. Um, and what Ben has shown, especially in this week against the Packers, um, there is no ability to escape. Would, would you guys all agree with me on that? Right. Yes. There's no ability to escape, right? He is very rarely stepping up in the pocket. Would you all agree with me on that? I don't know. Is a room? Yes or no? Yes is or... a room to step up in the pocket with his center yeah, no. being driven back? That's Let me give my you a, only go, question. Go, go back. Go back and watch the film on that okay. one sack fumble. Let's see what was it? It was a sack fumble or in the game. Trey, when Trey Turner. Turner got walked back. Yeah, there was an escape lane between Dotson and um, and, he and, get uh, Monroe, um, and Moore. Dan Moore, a quarterback that would that been in his earlier years would have escaped right between that. That I mean, it would have tried to escape through there. Um, and, and he, and he even admitted that he, you know, um, that he's got to work on the mechanics. Of, I know it doesn't fit this part, but Tomlin, I'm not the one who's seen it. Tomlin said the other day, he can't, he can't move. He can't move. Tomlin Coach Cower, Coach Cower said that at, in the halftime my report, he talked about Ben not being able to step up in the pocket and move like he used to. So this isn't like Chris Hoke being made, you know, it's like groundbreaking, um, news, oh, you always but the reality it. is, is that here, show. here's what happens guys. You have, uh, a quarterback that can't move and can't can't run like he used to. You have an offensive line that struggles. As a defender, you're salivating right now. Those Bronco defenders are salivating. And let me tell you why. Because they know that there's no threat of Ben escaping the pocket. There's You can leave a passing lane open, I mean, an escape lane open, and Ben's not going to step into it. And, and, I mean, he's done it maybe once or twice in four games. And so when you rush the passer – you pin your ears back, and you can be aggressive with no concern at all about covering up an escape lane. When I was a pass rusher for the Seahawks, and we, we were a little different. We, it was all about being unselfish on the inside and allowing the outside linebackers to rush, and we wanted to keep the quarterback in the pocket. But there's, there's no concern at all. And then as a defender, you put on top of that, you know where the quarterback's going to be on 9.5 out of 10 passes. He's going to be in the same spot every time. It's, it, it's, it's much easier for a rusher to get after the quarterback, and it's much, much more difficult for offensive linemen uh, to block for a quarterback like that. There's no, there's no rollouts. There's no, there's no threat of anything. He's in the same spot every pass. So, so what does he do? What, what's the solution to this? I mean, nothing's going to change, right? He's not going to drink some elixir and go back 20 years in time. Well, I, I think they can do a better job of helping this offensive line. I, I, I don't see a lot of chips. I don't see a lot of um, – you know, max protection. Um, you look at what they did with, like, T.J. Watt in this game. And T.J. Watt got, got two sacks. Um, Cheap ones, I thought. Okay, you said it. And But you look at it, and what they did, they, they would slide him a little bit where they weren't going to let T.J. Watt beat him on the outside. The tackle overshot, and then if, if T.J. worked inside, the tackle would shoot him with his left hand, punch him, kind of stymie him a little bit, and then that guard was right there in the second layer. 
And they did with a tight end, too, where the tight end would shoot out there and not let T.J. Watt get around the edge quick, overshoot it, and then if, he, if T.J. came inside, the tackle was there waiting for him. And so he had to beat two guys. I mean, Superman would have a tough time getting to the quarterback that way, right? And that's how the Steelers got to be creative in how they protect Ben. If Ben's going to sit back in the pocket and be there every time, um, they've got to find a way to allow um, – him a little bit of time because these 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 rushers are teeing off and they don't even need to blitz. They don't even need to bleed the blitz. That's how it easy it is for defensive linemen to to be aggressive, much more aggressive in the in, in passing rushing the passer um, when you know there is no threat at that position. There's still a lot here with Ben in this offense. Jerry Dulac story day. We had Bouchette on yesterday. He thinks that that Ben is getting unfairly criticized. That that this isn't necessarily on Ben. Um, Jerry Dulac wrote a piece today. Is Ben Roethlisberger being hamstrung by Matt Canada's game plan? Second paragraph, Roethlisberger's freedom to run the Steelers' offense is being limited, if not stripped. I don't know that I read this the first time around yesterday, Ron. This is pretty incendiary stuff here. Roethlisberger's freedom to run the Steelers' offense is being limited, if not stripped, by coordinator Matt Canada and coach Mike Tomlin. I don't know anything about that, but you're hearing that from some of these insiders, right? You, you know, you have a lot of insiders that are saying that they have, they have um, insider information, if you will, right, through direct contacts or through a player who's talked to somebody that says that he is hamstrung. And I, and I don't have that kind of information. But doesn't but, that come hokey from when he said he doesn't have it, they won't let him run the, the, the no-huddle offense, if they cut it back from like 100 plays? to 10 plays that's what he has done best for the last and that, that's that's the thing too and that's the thing that's where when i'm thinking been, this is coming from. yeah when when you see ben at his best he comes out and he runs that no huddle and that's that's when he's at his best and, and if, if that playbook's gone from 100 this ben wow. is at his best let, let me let me let me put it ben in, ben, ben throughout his career ben's been at his best when he's been at no huddle and that, that's that's just a fact right that's how they've when their offense has sputtered in games throughout the last 18 seasons They've gone to the no huddle, and Ben's been able to get things going, and they've, that's been able to kickstart the offense a lot of times. We've seen that year, game after game after game over the years. Um, and, and for some reason, they've, they've shrunk that is what we're hearing, right? And that's, that's not happening right now. The playbook has is, is been cut back drastically when it comes to the no huddle. So I don't know why that – I mean, if they're going to have Ben come back and play, why you wouldn't let that be part of, 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 of his game and let that be part of the offense because that's what he loves to do. So I don't understand that. But a lot of the insiders, like Jerry, Jerry Dulac, Ed Bouchette, I heard Dan Kovakovich talk about it. They're all – these guys are respectable, you know, inside guys. And so if they're all saying it, there's got to be some validity to it. Well, Tomlin has basically said it. He said it the other day in the weighty moments that, that you right. got to go with the call. But here's yeah. my question. What do your eyes and your sources, anything else, tell you that – which is truer? that Roethlisberger's being hamstrung by Canada's game plan or that Canada's potential playbook is being hamstrung by Ben? Can both be true? Sure. I think both can be true. I, I, I still think at the end of the day, um, Ben, ben likes, the, likes to be in the shotgun. I think Ben likes to be able to see the defense. And, he, you know, he's, he's not, again, with his limited mobility, Coach Tomlin admitted that on, to, on Tuesday in his presser, Right. Ben likes to be in the shotgun because getting out underneath the quarterback, you know, over a 60-minute game can be challenging. So he sits back in the shotgun, and um, and he can be hamstrung by the play calling, but also can I, th- I think it plays both because Ben can't run. You talk about all the creativity that Matt Canada like. Matt Canada likes to do play action. Matt Canada likes to roll out. He likes all these different kinds kind of things, and you're not seeing anything that 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 is identified as a Matt Canada offense. You might see some creativity. In, in their in their final alignments and their promotions, but I think both of them are true. Is it possible that 19 years in, I mean, you get shell shocked a little bit, that you get tired of getting hit, that you kind of see ghosts to, uh, you know, uh, is that possible that he's sure, trying I'm to sure get rid po- of the ball I'm, I'm, so quick? Yeah. I don't want to get hit again. Yeah, I mean, and, and listen, and, and and when you're 39 years old, you don't recover as quickly as you did when you were 29, right? This the recovery time is, is a little bit longer and and those hits um hurt a little more right um and and they've and you hear, you hear this all the time people talking that, that was one of ben's strengths that was one of the edges that ben had over other quarterbacks in his game people ben was a big bully 
He really was. I mean, Ben Ben would take guys and just throw them. I mean, it was like he would throw guys off him and, and throw the ball downfield. He'd have Haloti Nada hanging on him, breaking his nose, and he'd complete a da- he'd complete a strike. I mean, that was that was what Ben was good at. And Ben Ben, I don't know how many times I watched Ben just do amazing things on the field because he's able to shake guys, scramble, run around the place, you know, and, and then find a, an open receiver streaking down the field. That was his game, and, and we're not seeing that anymore. And, and that's why I think that, you know, so many people are concerned and, and it's much more difficult to protect, again, I'm going back to this, for a quarterback who sits in the pocket and doesn't do what he does, what he's done in the past. Chris Hoke, Super Bowl champion in studio for the whole hour. All right, so let's get to this. Ron and I had an enthusiastic conversation the other day, and many people in town have. Uh, Ed Bouchette yesterday again was on with us. The throws to Juju, one down the seam in the first half, pretty much a a similar throw uh, in the second half, a little bit deeper, I guess, down the left Mm sideline. Were Vince Williams, your old teammate? Yeah said yeah. that a, num- a true number one wideout makes the first catch. That sounds personal to me. Well, first let's go. <laughs> I'm saying, first, first, if you're going to say that on Twitter, put that out there. I mean, a true number one, that sounds like a personal. But that, what, you know. why, what would he have against I don't know. Track? I don't know. I, I don't know. I just, to that's me, an interesting, a true an number interesting one would have caught that. That is a, that's, there's something personal there. I don't know what it would is. Would a true number one have caught that? And were they, what do you think of the throws? I mean, I, I mean, listen, I, I go back and watch the film and Cookie showed me before we got on the air, a, a slow motion. And listen, you can manipulate film all you want, right? I mean, you can look at the film and say, well, I, I used to hate that as a player, right, where a coach would – you'd be watching the film and they'd stop it and they'd okay. go, you know, it, you, you, you go – it looks like you're getting ready to cross over, but you end up – you're not crossing over. You're not to cross over. I mean, you can stop and pause film any way you want and zoom it in and move it. That used to drive me crazy, right? And you can manipulate film all you want. In this situation, I believe that those balls were uncatchable, in my opinion. Now, I'm a defensive lineman. I never had to catch a ball in my life. But when I look at it with my eyes, I see the first one, Ben drove that ball. Ben actually stepped up, and he stepped into that ball and drove it, and he probably could have put a little more touch on that ball, my opinion, right? And I think that, that um, you know, that was, that was a prime opportunity to score there. It was early in the game. Then the second one was down the left seam. Yeah, he was talking about the seam down the left, and, um, and Ben talked about his, his lower body mechanics in his interview yesterday, right? You guys remember hearing that? Mm-hmm. There was pressure coming up off his left. He didn't step up. He kind of, he kind of, um, the, the old Peyton Manning kind of dance, dance in his bit. feet. Yeah. And he threw the ball. His feet weren't set. And he just, that ball sailed on him. And, um, and that's what I see when I watch the film. I don't know, Hokey. I, 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 I'm, a, I'm in agreement with Vince Williams on this one. I thought he had to sure. make those catches. That's the wonderful I thought, thing. I, I, I shouldn't say that. I didn't see the second one close enough. I, I'm, I don't know. My, oh, he, 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 didn't see the, he didn't see the second one close enough, but the first one, he saw it close enough. I didn't enough. see it at all until I saw this little video I showed you. My instant reaction, I wrote down, bad throw by Ben, over. Yeah. Then I see this, and then I hear Juju after the game. He was very down on himself. I need to make those catches. Those are the ones. That's I a competitor, though, right? That's what. Uh, yeah, yeah. He's going to tr- protect his quarterback. I don't know. I don't know what to think. Um I thought that one was catchable. Here's the thing, though. I'm not sitting here saying that Ben, ben can still make the throws. I mean, you saw that dagger he threw to James Washington late in the game. He can make those well, I mean, throws. I to throw to Deontay. To so it's not, it's, we're not saying game. that he's just washed. I mean, this guy can still throw the ball. Um, it, it's, it's, it's combina- it, it's, he can't move. He, he, he's, he, he can't move, and the offensive line isn't what the offensive line was five years ago, which he, he could stand back there and make all those throws and not have to worry about escaping. Well, let's come full circle then okay. with this conversation. Given the state of the offense right now, would you replace Ben with Mason? Would it be pl- if, if you were running things? Would Mason? I wouldn't do it right now. Right I now? wouldn't do it right now. I don't. Th- I don't think that right now is the time. I don't think now. If, if we sit two or three weeks from now and 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 nothing's changed and we're still, you know, there's a lot of hiccups on this offense, and I think you got to entertain it. But listen, ben, Ben's Ben. There's too much equity in in that in that in that in that emotional bank account, if you will. And, too, uh, you know, too much, the line too much of demarcation, though, the perfect line is the bye week. Two more weeks. Two more home games. They play Denver, and then they play Seattle, and then they have the bye week. Yeah. Isn't that the time you'd make the change if he's still struggling? That college? sounds like a reasonable time if you were going to do because it. Because then you'd have Mason two weeks to get ready with the first offense. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And, and, and listen, I, Ben's such a competitor. I, I honestly, I, I wouldn't, I'm not going to bet against him and say he can't turn it around. I really, I'm not. I'm not going to, because I've seen Ben 
compete. He's done too many great things over the years that, you know, it's just that's where we're sitting today as we've seen it the first four weeks. I'm not to say he can't turn it around because he has shown that he can make those throws. I think it's just a, a combination. I think a lot of it is just trust. I think, and I think trusting in um, the offensive line, I think it's trusting that he's not going to get crushed every single time he sits in the pocket. I think a lot of that is that um, even something he might not even be able to communicate. It's just inside of him that he's that that that's happening inside of him that he that's making him get rid of the ball quickly and, and not letting him step up. It's quite the situation to monitor. Let let's talk coming up about the matchup ahead with the Broncos, about the defense, which had its own issues with mm-hmm. Aaron Rodgers. But I also want to get a little more into these fourth down calls. Uh, another old teammate, Charlie Batch, says he looks at the pass to Juju, for example, that was, well, it was complete on fourth down, yeah. but it was short of the sticks. And, and It was a man beater, and he threw it in his own. Yeah, well, let's talk about it. I want you to break that down because Batch says that that there's no way an earlier Ben would have would have run that play. And that Charlie Batch would know that checked, better than anybody. He would have checked to another play. Let's talk uh, about well, the fourth down about issues. Zone man, I, I just was reading, Matt Canada had an interesting comment about that. Very interesting comment about that. A little tease. Oh, How do you like that? Video, he's How do you good. like that radio tease? He's, by he's, Ron? He is a savvy veteran. That was a great tease right there. Savvy old it, tease hound. It was he? a little more interesting than I thought. All right. We'll get to that next as well.